A while back, I showed you how you can easily do HTTP requests, uh, gets or posts uh, using C Sharp. And a lot of you wrote back to say that you wanted to find out how to actually get the headers from the returned response. You asked for it and now I'm doing it. And spoilers, it's really easy. Let's take a look. Hello world, I'm Nick Proud, software engineer and big .NET fan, and I'm here to talk to you today about how you can get the response headers from a HTTP request that you've done in C Sharp. So this is something that you guys have requested, uh, and it comes off the back of another video where I showed you how to uh, do a HTTP uh, call to an API, in this case a, a fake placeholder API, and pass the response that was sent in JSON. So let's take a look how you can actually get the headers out of that response. Before we start, if you like this video and you find the content useful, please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel. So let's take a look at our code then. So if you haven't already watched my previous video, how to do HTTP gets and posts in C Sharp, take a look at that because that will give you a bit more background on what we're doing here. But essentially, we're using a .NET HTTP client object to reach out to an endpoint, in this case, the JSON placeholder.tipico.com endpoint for posts. Uh, again, just take a look at the address. It will make a lot more sense. It's just a, an API for practicing HTTP calls. Uh, and then we're getting the result. And in the previous video, we then passed that result that was sent back in JSON to understand uh, how we can do something with the response. In this video, we're gonna take a look at getting the headers. So first of all, I think we should do the actual API call and then take a look at the actual headers that were received. So this is a basic console application as, as we used before. Uh, and I'm just gonna start this application so that we can see the result that comes back. So I've breakpointed it here on result. And then if I just skip ahead and take a look at this result object, uh, so you can see we've got a status 200, which is great. Everything's come back okay. Uh, but the thing that we're actually interested in is the headers. So the HTTP response object has a headers property. And if we drill into that, there's lots of different things in here that we can take a look at. But the things that we're really interested in are just the raw results. So you just want the I enumerable, so the collection uh, that has the headers that we're trying to get out. And in your case, you'll probably already have the name or key of a header in mind. So for example, if you were doing this HTTP re uh, call and you wanted to get the via header, you know, not necessarily a header that you would typically want to get, but just as an example, um, then we would be expecting when we look for the via key to get back a value of 1.1 Vega. Okay, so that's the actual value that we want to get out. So again, we're looking for the via header and we want the value of that via header. Again, in your use case, it would be something different, but the method of retrieving the header is the same. So the first thing I wanna do then is I wanna create an object which will refer to the headers that were sent back in the result. So I'm just simply gonna create uh, a variable called headers, um, and that will be equal to result. So that is the HTTP result that we got here after that call dot headers. So I've got something to refer to. So I've got the property headers there in a variable. I'm also gonna create a string um, called header result. This is where we're gonna put our final head, header result. So assuming we get the value of our header, I'm gonna put it in that variable. So string header result, uh, now you can either do this or I like to do string.empty because it's just a little bit more clear that I want to just create an empty string object. So then we want to create a, a collection for our headers to go into uh, the results of the header search that we're going to do. It will become a bit more clear shortly why this is needed. Uh, but I'm going to create an I enumerable. So an I enumerable is one of the base types in C Sharp. It's a collection and I want to create an I enumerable of string and we're gonna do header search results. And I'm just gonna create um, an ex a simple I enumerable with no instance. I'm not gonna instantiate it. I'm just gonna create one that just sits there waiting for something. So, so far what we've done is we've created 
created a reference to the property headers on our HTTP result. We've created an empty string that we're going to put our final result into. And then we've created this I enumerable a string where we're going to where we're going to store our results of a search for a particular header. In this case, the via header that was sent in that response. So then how do we get the results into this I enumerable and then finally into this string? This is where try get value comes into play. And this is a really uh, useful method. So what I can do here, if I just use the IntelliSense, I can refer to headers. So this is our headers object here. And I can say try get values. So let's just take a look at that. So you can see in the IntelliSense or in the, in the information here, we can see that this function try get values returns a bool. So what this tries to do is it looks inside the headers object and says for a value um, of the key that you've passed in, so for us we would pass in the key via because that's the name of the header that we're looking for, see if you can get any values for it. And if you can, uh, put it into or output it into a variable of type I enumerable string. So you can see here, that's why we've created one. Uh, and we've got this question mark here to say that it's nullable. Uh, so put the values in there if they exist and then return a true or false to say whether they were found. So in our case, if the header was found, it would say it would return true and it would also put the value of that header into that collection so that we'd be able to fish it out. Now, the benefit of this means that we can react conditionally, which means that we don't uh, have to just always try and get the values and then check to see if the output was null. What we can do is say, if headers.trygetValues equals true, or headers.trygetValues, because then we can test to see if it was successful. And if it was, then we can get the first item that was placed into that I enumerable, and that should be the value that we're looking for. So let's take a look at how we do this. So I'm going to place it in an if statement, seeing as this returns a bool, we want to evaluate if it's true or false. So I'm going to say if headers.trygetValues, so we want to say if this is successful, we're going to place it, we're going to get the first one out of this uh, outputted I enumerable and place it into this header result. So try get values. So the name of our header is via. So that's the one we're looking for. And then we need to provide an output variable, in this case, header search results. And so because it's an output variable, it requires the out keyword first, and then header search results. There we go. So this will now say, if I was able to find a value in the headers for this key for buyer, then I'll put the values into header search results, this I enumerable string, and I'll return true. And therefore the block of um, code here inside the if statement will run because it's true. So assuming it's true and we actually do find it, then we're gonna say um, header result equals header search results zero, as in the first one. Now that's giving me an error uh, saying that it can't apply indexing to an I enumerable string, which is weird. I don't know why it would have suggested to do that. Um, so what we want to do is use first, uh, because that will just give us the first item that was outputted into that I enumerable. You can do first or default if you like, and then check to see if it's null later. Um, although, um, yeah, that, that should be fine. But really, because we've used try get values, and that returns a true or false. If it's true, then we can pretty safely assume that it's placed a value into header search results, into that I enumerable. So if all goes to plan and we do get a value out for this uh, header here, it will place it into this header result variable. So let's give this a try and see what we get. So I'll start the console application again, and then We'll get the results. We've got headers, um, and then we've created our blank header result string variable. Then we're going to do our headers.trygetValues, 
and you can see that has actually returned true. So if we take a look before we go any further at the I enumerable, you can see there is one entry in there. Uh, and if we just take a look here, we can see the first entry is the value we were expecting. So you can see now that it's going to assign it to that header result. And there we go. All good. Let's try this with another variable, with another um, header then. So let's take a look at some of the other headers that we've got, just to hit this home a bit more. So we'll go to the results. Say we wanted to get the, the date. So here's the date value, and it's under the key of date. So there's a header in there called date. So we can use the same method to grab the date header. So we could say, uh, we'll get it as a string, uh, date header result equals string dot empty. And then we can say, if headers dot try get values date, we want to put it out into header search results again, we can just reinstantiate that collection with the result then date had a result equals had a search results dot first there we go so we'll try that see what that gives us so it does our first one and you can see here that it has worked for the date as well and it's inputted the value of that date into the I enumerable that we can then fish out with first. If we take a look at date header result, we have the long date in string format. And then you can then pass that date and do some of the things with it if you want to. But the key thing here is that we were very easily able to grab the header out. And if it doesn't exist, then it will just return false and you can evaluate that and do something with it. So it still allows you to handle that. If you were expecting a header, for example, to exist and it doesn't, you can put some contingency in place to say if headers.trygetValues equals false, um, or you can append an else to these if statements, for example, then you can still handle that because you were expecting a header that didn't exist. So you can see a very, very simple method with uh, one function, try get values. It's a very good way to grab header content out of HTTP responses. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Uh, I really enjoy doing these videos and I really hope this is very useful for you. Um, and just let me know how you get on. Like if there are any other things you wanna look at in terms of um, using the HTTP client in C Sharp, then I'd be more than happy to do more videos on it. Until next time, keep coding.